Hello everyone and welcome to a brilliant game from round 2 of this year's FIDE World Cup. It is the uh, the most requested game uh, in the comments from my previous video, the Magnus Carlsen versus Levan Pansalaya game. Uh, it is a uh, French Grandmaster Maxim Lagarde versus Pregnananda and uh, even though uh, Gukesh just broke into the top 10, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, uh, he broke, um, he's now uh, he's now less than one point away from overtaking Vishwanathan Anand in the, uh, in the top 10. Uh, not even one point, like 0.6 Six points he overtook uh, Richard Rapport uh, who is now number 11 and uh, although that is uh, a very very impressive this is the game you guys requested I was planning on showing the Gukesh game but after seeing this one I just couldn't um, uh, maybe I'll show it tomorrow but for now we absolutely must see uh, this one but Prague also doing incredibly well uh, he's just uh, like 27 20 now also really climbing rapidly uh, we're going to discuss that after we check out the game because this is just uh, I mean it, it, it's like a, a, a modern a modern immortal uh, or, or something I don't know what to call it you guys can figure it out uh, I'm just here to uh, show you the moves so here uh, Maxime Lagarde has the white pieces and he opens with e4 we have pawn to e5 knight f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 so a normal Rui Lopez um, uh, you you probably don't expect uh, you know fireworks here uh, but Prague goes for knight g to e7 the Cozio defense and something you don't see at the absolute top level uh, at least not very often we have knight to c3, knight to g6, and now pawn to d4. And usually e captures on d4 is played, but Prague plays knight captures on d4. Uh, at, at the top level, uh, not really not really a weapon uh, one would use. Jergush Pehaj does use it. He he has employed it three times, uh, but there is a game uh, where Arjun Ergeisi uh, used it against Vishwanathan Anand himself, but Anand uh, won that game. It was last year in the European Club Cup. Uh, so let's see what uh, Prague found as an improvement. Knight captures on d4, e captures and queen captures on d4. Now hindering the development of the dark square bishop as the g7 pawn would hang. So c6 chasing away the bishop. We have bishop to e2 and now queen to b6. Prague offers a queen trade uh, and Maxime declines. Queen to d3 and now there is a game where castle was played also queen to g3 is a known move uh, but Prague plays the immediate uh, sorry uh, Maxime plays uh, Prague plays bishop to e7 but Maxime plays a pawn to f4 and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. Sorry about that, forgot to include uh, Prague's bishop to e7 there. Uh, so, okay, uh, bishop to e7, uh, f4, and now castles by Prague. We have pawn to h4 by Maxime, uh, preparing to play pawn to h5 to kick away the knight. And, well, Prague could play a bishop captures on h4 with check. He decides against it, because after bishop captures in g3, as the pawn is defended, the bishop moves back. Uh, you give Maxime the open h file for the rook, could be a little bit dangerous. So, first, Prague plays pawn to d5. He wants to get his uh, a light square bishop into the game uh, and now uh, okay you could play captures on d5 sure but then uh, bishop captures on h4 uh, sorry, sorry, bishop captures on h4 with check, g3, and now bishop to f6, let's say pawn to d6, and now bishop to e6, uh, Prague would be very happy with this to get his um, uh, bishops into the game. And now, okay, this uh, th doesn't look all that impressive, as uh, you can't really kick away that knight from g6 if you push f5, even if you play something like, uh, I don't know how you would even, even push f5, uh, um, because you would close down your diagonal, so it doesn't really make sense, you will not be able to attack. Uh, uh, so instead, after d5, we have pawn to h5 right away, and here come as a, the uh, the action. We have uh, <laughs> uh, d captures on e4. Uh, and now we have queen to g3. Now the knight cannot move, otherwise uh, you, you might have some problems here. But he does play knight to h4. And he says, I don't mind uh, if you play pawn to h6. It doesn't really work due to knight to f5. Attacking the queen, defending against checkmate, and also preparing to capture on h6. So how do you react to knight to h4? Uh, you can't even play something like bishop to e3, even though you, know, you, you don't necessarily want to react to this. But then just queen captures and b2. So there's no good move that white can play here. Uh, to, to play a useful move even. So he has to accept the challenge and he plays rook captures on h4. Now he would very much enjoy it if Prague just captures the rook, he captures with the queen, but he goes queen to g1 check first. Uh, Maxime blocks with uh, bishop to f1 and now comes pawn to e3. This is a beautiful, beautiful move. The only move that gives uh, advantage to Prague, pawn to e2. And now how do you defend? 
It's uh, not easy. <laughs> the, the rook here is still being attacked, but you don't have time to, to deal with the rook. Knight to d1. You have to go after the pawn here. Uh, and you can't just capture it. Um, yes, okay, you're attacking it twice, but then uh, bishop will capture on h4. Or if, or even if bishop captures on e3, then bishop captures on h4 and you have problems here. You cannot capture because queen captures comes with check. And if bishop captures on g1, bishop captures on g3 comes with check. And now... Uh, Black's position is much, much better. Bishop f2, bishop captures on f4, and you are just um, uh, up a pawn, but also your, your position is that much uh, better. No, no, not just up a pawn, also up the exchange. You have two rooks and two bishops for a rook, uh, two bishops, and a knight. So, oh, of course, completely winning. So instead, after e3, we have knight to d1, going after the pawn this way, and now rook to e8. Another beautiful, quiet move by Prague. Again, not rushing with bishop captures on h4. And uh, how do you react to this. Do you have time to save the rook? Absolutely not. The problem is if you play something like where would you even put the rook? Let's say you play rook h2, you get checkmated. It's actually a forced checkmate in eight moves. Bishop to b4 with check uh, opens up the e file for the rook, and after you play something, doesn't really matter, just pawn to e2. There's no there's no move here. You have to play something 93, but now he captures on f1 with check. You bring a queen into the game. King to d2, as the knight, of course, cannot move. You have to move the king. King to d2. Now you can play rook to d8 with check. King to c2. Even give up one of the queens. You don't need both of them. Knight captures. Queen captures with check. King b1. And, of course, bishop to f5 with check. This is only one of the lines that um, completely destroy white. Queen d3. And now bishop or queen captures will be checkmate. So instead, after rook to e8, queen to, uh, sorry, king to e2 was played. I mean, just by seeing this move, you know that <laughs> this is just not going to work out well uh and uh okay uh, yeah okay one, one thing you we could consider is also bishop captures on e3 i i would want to mention that before showing what actually happened now you get bishop captures on h4 and after queen captures rook captures on e3 with check knight captures queen captures with check and after bishop to e2 there's this spectacular bishop to g4 you don't have time uh, to go after the rook because you will have to waste one move and then you're going to get checkmated with queen to d8 so first you throw in bishop to g4 uh you are threatening checkmate now so white will have the capture on g4 and now queen g1 with check and you can go if you go bishop to f1 then rook to e8 will be crushing but other moves aren't all that better if king to d2 then queen captures on a1 and if now pawn to h6 it doesn't really matter because queen captures on b2 defends against checkmate and next rook to d8 is coming and white gets absolutely crushed so those are the two ideas you can't move the rook you can't capture the pawn that's why king to e2 was played by maxim uh, but I mean, lo look at this. Uh, we have uh, uh, bishop to e6, another uh, very nice move by Prague. Now bishop to c4 will be a huge problem. So pawn to b3, defending against bishop to c4 and also maybe hoping to somehow develop your bishop, uh, threaten something on g7. Uh, rook a to d8 by Prague. Beautifully played. We have knight captures on e3, finally grabbing that pawn. And now white is, uh, white is just up a piece. And uh, if uh, wh white can survive the attack, then this extra knight will... Uh, proved to be a lot. But now Prague finally moves the bishop, but not to where you're thinking. He doesn't go for the, the rook on h4. He plays bishop to f6, aligning the bishop with the rook nicely on a1. The rook is undefended. So even though your king is on e2, you hate your position. You, you can't just allow bishop captures on a1 for nothing. It's a free, free hanging rook. So rook to b1, and now another beautiful move, bishop to f5. Uh, just uh, threatening bishop captures on c2, which again you cannot allow. Then imagine this bishop captures on c2, bishop to d1 check. The knight cannot move uh, from the rook uh, on e8. So here queen to f2 was played. Uh, and interestingly, uh, this queen to f2 is such a good move that there is only one move that wins the game for Prague. Uh, but it's not easy to spot. It's a brilliant, brilliant move. So feel free to pause the video and win the game uh, for Prague in, in a brilliant fashion while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on always looking for fun new ways to uh, uh, blunder your queen. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Bishop Captures on H4. This is what Prague played, and now you see that you're completely, completely lost here. Uh, the queen, of course, cannot be captured. If the queen is taken, Bishop to G4 is checkmate. There is no square for the for the white king. The rook controls the D file. Bishop controls this diagonal, and this bishop controls F3 and delivers check on E2. So this would be one beautiful 
beautiful double bishop double rook checkmate something that we don't see very often uh so after bishop captures on h4 the only move you can play is the capture on h4 uh, but now just bishop captures on c2 attacks the rook threatens bishop to d1 with check i mean there's what what do you even play here that you can't move the bishop the bishop is needed here to guard the knight on e3 otherwise just queen captures on e3 will be checkmate uh here queen captures on d8 was played only move that keeps the game going because you can't move the rook away from the e file and pick up that bishop on c2 uh, but now you're just down too much material and you will lose at some point but uh you know it's better than resigning of course uh, there's nothing like a, nothing like a good old stubborn defense and many have uh, fallen victim to it so rook captures on d8 knight captures on c2 and now queen to c5 again the absolute strongest move by prague attacking the knight attacking the h5 pawn so knight to e3 and now rook to e8 putting pressure on the knight here king f3 unpinning and now queen to d4 not rushing for the h5 pawn uh we have king back to e2 and now queen to c5 queen f3 a uh, king of three repeating once but now prague accepts the pawn queen captures on h5 with check g4 and queen to h1 with check this is now only a matter of time king to g3 rook to e6 now going after rook to g6 pawn to h5 to blast open the position uh bishop to d2 finally the bishop uh, gets into the game the rook is now also uh, uh, a part of this game uh, but pawn to h5 we have g captures on h5 queen captures on h5 and now rook to e1 uh, rook to g6 with check king to f2 and now a nice queen to h4 check king f3 queen to g3 with check king to e4 and now rook to d6 Prague prepares a very very nasty surprise and um, uh, maxime goes for it rook to e2 and now feel free to pause the video for the second time and try to find the absolute best move for Prague. it's actually a forced checkmate in three moves uh, so have at it uh so uh, for those of you who were able to do it congratulations on finding all of the three uh, checkmating maneuvers and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show it is pawn to f5 with check this is what Prague played and he was in this position on move 37 and uh, maxime lagarde resigned the game as there is really nothing more to be done here uh so the 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 I uh, thing is, if you capture with the knight, then the queen gets access to the d3 square. Queen d3 checking, d5, and queen to d5 will be checkmate. If you don't take with the knight, you could also capture with the king. Then you just go queen to g6 checking, d5, and queen to e6 checkmate. And, of course, uh, the last option is to not take it at all, is to play king to e5. But now, queen to g6. And next move, you will uh, either deliver checkmate via the f6 square or the e6 square, all depending on what, uh, what the white plays. Like, if white plays something weird, like knight to g4 to cover f6 then you will deliver uh, queen d6 checkmate so it's not even possible to prolong let's say white plays pawn to b4 i mean why not just queen to e6 checkmate so uh brilliant brilliant stuff uh, by prague I, I i don't really recall the last time i've seen such a such a spectacular attacking game uh, both of them, I mean, uh, it requires uh, uh, two to create uh, something beautiful, something this beautiful. Uh, but after this pawn to h4 and uh, this position here with knight to h4, this is just absolute complete madness on the board. Uh, absolute fire and, you know, just queen g1, e3, finding all of these beautiful silent moves. I mean, look at those bishops, the rooks, the queen on g1. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know, Prague has so many, so many incredible attacking successful games uh, that it would be a reckless to even suggest this to be a, a Prague's immortal game. Uh, but it's, it's, I mean, it, it's just an incredible game. Let's not over push it. Uh, unless you guys, uh, you know, w w want to, then it's fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, Prague just doing prog things you know as we all uh, uh, enjoy uh this is uh what i've mentioned before the game uh so this is currently the world top 10 uh gukesh uh, won uh, uh won his game and now he's on 2753.4 only 0 0.6 points uh, uh below vishwanathan anand so if he overtakes anand then he will i believe he will become india's number one uh for the first time uh after like 37 years anand's been on ta on uh, the, the number one uh, rated indian player for 37 years i believe which is absolutely incredible uh but other uh, other indians doing really really uh, awesome as well i think there are six of them in the top top uh, uh, over 27 uh, 27 50, uh, over 2700 so i mean incredible stuff and prague also prague is um 
let me just check i don't want to trick you guys uh let me just check real quickly Prague is yeah uh, he shot up 19 places he's currently number 28 with a live rating of 27 27 11 so also doing uh, incredibly incredibly well uh but yeah uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank all the games are best. Len Herbert, uh, Seth Harper, uh, Schlercher, and Paul Harris for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up uh, on the other games of the FIDE World Cup, and of course, on your wonderful suggestions, such as this one. Pretty much all of the comments on the previous video were, show this game, show this game, show this game. So there you have it. I've shown the game. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.